this video, we will learn how to draw chemical reaction mechanism. The first thing we need to know is that we use curved arrows when drawing a mechanism. There are two parts to the arrow. There's the tail and the head. In some reactions, well most reactions, we will use a double-sided head. That indicates the movement of two electrons. In some, we will use one head as a transfer of one electron. That is used in radicals, so we will not do that now. An example of how to use a curved arrow can be shown in the protonation of hydroxide to become a water molecule. As you can see, the oxygen and hydrogen both share one electron to create the bond. Over here, we have a free hydrogen atom Oxygen can also form a bond between here by the sharing of the electrons, which will be indicated by a curved arrow, resulting in a neutral water molecule. With the sharing of both electrons, there are three basic rules to draw in a mechanism. First, cannot break. Octet rule. Second, curved arrow always points from a more negative su um, substance to a more positive substance. Never the reverse. The third rule is that all curved arrows. must accomplish one of the four characteristic patterns. The first of these patterns is a nucleophilic attack. In this pattern, you have ion, such as bromine, that acts as a nucleophile, and a positive molecule, such as a carbocation, acting as the electrophile. The nucleophile then attacks the positive electrophile. The electrons here attack the, attack the carbocation and form a molecule, such as this one, where the bond is formed between the electrophile and the nucleophile. The second pattern is loss of a leaving group. This is essentially the reverse of a nucleophilic attack. So therefore we can take the product mate and reverse reverse the arrow to go back to the bro to the bromine to create once again a carbocation. The third pattern is known as proton transfers. First kind of proton transfers, protonation, or the addition of a proton. Most often in chemical mechanisms, the proton will be a hydrogen atom. In this example, we have a cyclohexane and attached hydroxide group. In an SN1 or an SN2 mechanism, most often we will want the hydroxide to leave, but in order to make it a better leaving group, the protonation will need to occur. Most often by adding an acid to the mixture. When you add the acid, the oxygen will attack the hydrogen because there's a dipole created. And the, the, the electrons that form the bond between the hydrogen and the bromine atom go on to the bromine, therefore forming positively charged water.
water molecule due to the addition of the proton. positively charged hydrogen or water molecule will, do, will, will then make a better leaving group to further the mechanism. Second kind of proton transfer is deprotonation. In this example we have a ketone with an attached hydrogen group. hydrogen group is positive and wants to become neutral. In order for that to happen, we'll use a base, such as a hydroxide ion, that wants to become positively charged. Hydrox the negative hydroxide ion will attack the positive hydrogen, therefore deprotonating the ketone, making it neutral. Fourth type of pattern in the chemical reaction mechanism is known as re rearrangement. Rearrangement is used to make stable carbocations. In an SN1 or E1 mechanism, the leaving group leaves and a carbocation is formed. But sometimes a carbocation can become unstable. Therefore, a rearrangement needs to occur in order to make a more stable carbocation so the reaction can, can continue. An example of this, where there are two, two types of rearrangements. One of them is hydra, hydride and methyl. In a hydride shift, shift of a hydrogen atom to the other side of the molecule. Here you see there is the charge is located on a secondary carbon. When the hydrogen shifts, it creates a much more stable charge on a much more stable tertiary. We can go over and do the same thing. Here you have your unstable, your charge on an unstable carbon, but a methyl shift can occur to form a much more stable tertiary carbocation. All these mechanism patterns can be used to write one big complicated mechanism. In this example, we will use an SN1 mechanism because it can include all four of them. Take, for example, this alkane with an attached hydroxide group. This hydroxide group will eventually be replaced with a bromine atom from this acid. In order to do that, the, the hydroxide group needs to be protonated in order to make it a better leaving group. To do this, the oxygen will take the hydrogen away from the, from the atom, and the remaining electrons will be transferred to the bromine atom, eventually making this alkene with an attached positive water molecule, making it a very good leaving group. The next step is with this loss of a leaving group, this bond is broken, and the curved arrow represents the electrons um, being added to the, to the oxygen in the water molecule, taking away this charge and forming a carbocation. As you remember, this is an unstable carbocation because the charge is held on a secondary, and you have a, actually a quaternary carbocation or carbon over here. So therefore, a methyl shift can occur, or a rearrangement 
in order to make a more stable carbon cation. Continue the reaction down here. This methyl shift has occurred, bringing the methyl group over here, causing the charge to shift to a more um, stable carbon. This is a tertiary carbon cation, which is very stable. Finally, we have this bromine ion that can act as a nucleophile. And the last step is a nucleophilic attack of this carbocation. A bond is formed. We have now replaced um, the hydroxide group with this bromine group. And there's an S1 reaction. So first, we have this proton transfer. Next, we have loss of leaving group. all these together and you have an S11 mechanism. There are other types of mechanisms to draw too, which include SN1, SN2, so substitution reactions, E1 and E2, which are elimination reactions, and various types of addition reactions, which will be learned in later videos.